Dude, as I was saying, the only way that you can have eternal life is by trusting in the one and only Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. The only way you can have eternal life is by trusting in the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Selassie I cannot save you. No one else can save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you, the sinner. I know that if I were to ask any of you the question, if I were to ask any of you here, most of you will say yes to this question. Are you a good person? You'd say yes. You'd say yes, you're a good person. But the Bible says, in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, only God is good. Only God is good. So if you call yourself good, you're calling God a liar. If you say that you are a good person, you're calling God a liar. Because you and I, apart from the grace of God, are bad people. We're bad people. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, Be holy as God is holy. Are you perfect? Oh, no, you're not. Are you holy? Oh, no, you're not. Are you righteous? Oh, no, you're not. That is the bad news. That's the bad news, that you're not holy, you're not perfect, and you're not righteous. And God will not accept anything less than perfection, holiness, and righteousness. Anything less than that takes you to hell. That's the bad news. But the good news is this. When you trust in Christ, when you repent of your sins, God gives you His perfection, His holiness, His righteousness. And you are declared righteous, declared perfect, declared holy. And God can freely and justly bring you into heaven, set you free from His wrath. Because Christ has died in your place and earned you perfection, holiness, and righteousness. But this was only for God's people. Only for God's people. And God's people will believe. God's people will trust in Him. And God's people will believe through His Word. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of Christ. That's why we preach the Gospel. That's why we preach the Word of God. That's why we preach. Because we know that when God's people hear His voice, they will come. They will believe. They will trust in Him and they will receive salvation and be saved from the wrath of God. But everyone else, all the goats, all the reprobate, all the children of the enemy who will continue to be His children, you will go to hell. Oh, General. That's the gospel that God will give you the only righteousness, the only perfection, the only holiness that He will accept. And that is His holiness, His righteousness, His perfection. He gives that to you who believe. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 8, Blessed is the man to whom God will not take his sin into account. When you are God's son, when you are God's daughter, when you are God's child, when He saves you, He does not count your sins against you. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Love keeps no record of wrongs. When you are God's son, when you are God's child, the Bible does not call you a sinner. The Bible calls you a saint because your sins are no longer counted against you. But apart from God, apart from Christ, when you live in sin, all of your sins are counted against you. And all of your sins will take you to hell. In John chapter 8, verse 36.
That's what the Bible says. God keeps no record of wrongs. The love keeps no record of wrongs. The Bible says that God is love. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Who does God have this love for? It's not everyone. Oh, no, it's not everyone. Because if God loves everyone the same way, and the Bible says that love keeps no record of wrongs, that that means no one will go to hell. No one will go to hell. But guess what? God does not love everyone. He only loves his children. And only his children are the ones who will go to heaven. Only his children are the ones who have their sins wiped away, who will not have their sins counted against them. That's why the Bible does not call God's children sinners. The Bible calls them saints. But all of the devil's children, all of Satan's children, all of the enemy's children, God's wrath, God's judgment, God's hatred abides. And he will send you to hell without any remorse if you don't repent of your sin. Repent today and live. Repent today and live. Hear my voice. Hear my cry. I'm crying out to you. I'm pleading with you. Repent of your sins before you die. Because your death could be today. You could die today. And as your neighbor who loves you enough, as your neighbor who loves you enough to take time out of my day, to preach the word of God to you. As your neighbor who loves you enough to tell you the truth. The truth is this. Unless you repent, you will perish. Unless you repent, you will be condemned. Unless you repent, you will go to hell. There's no chances, no other chances, no second chances after death. If anyone told you that when you die, you'll have another chance, they lied to you. If anyone told you that when you die, God will forgive you if you die in your sins, they lied to you. If anyone told you that God is love and he loves you just the way you are and he will never stop loving you, oh, they lied to you. And because you have not read your Bible, you don't have any discernment. Because you have not read the word of God, you have no discernment. You have no knowledge of his word. You have no knowledge of the truth. So you believe lies after lies. You believe lie after lie after lie. You believe lies. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 36, verse 1 to verse 4, Sin, transgression, speaks to the ungodly within his heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Sin speaks to your heart. That's why every day you get up, you live in sin. Every day you get up, you plan when you're going to sin, who you're going to sin with, and where you're going to sin. Verse 4, the sinner plans wickedness upon his bed. He sets himself on a path that is not good. He does not despise evil. I'll read that again. The sinner plans wickedness on his bed. He sets himself on a path that is not good. He does not despise evil. Oh yeah, you do. Every night when you go to bed, you plan when you're going to sin. You plan who you're going to sin with. And you plan where you're going to sin. You plan your sin. You plan your wickedness. Because sin speaks to your heart. Sin is speaking to your heart. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 9, The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
We have a culture here in Jamaica. We, we say, when I drink coconut water, I wash out your heart. There's nothing that could be further from the truth. Nobody here has a clean heart. No one has a clean heart. The Bible says God has to change your heart for you to be accepted. Ezekiel chapter 26. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. God has to change your heart because your heart is wicked. Your heart hates God. Everything you say, everything you do, and everything that goes through your mind, it is a representation of your heart. That's why you curse so much. That's why you think about fornication. That's why you think about murder. That's why you, you think about sex before marriage. That's why you think about stealing people's money. You call them overseas and you scam them out of their money. It doesn't matter what you do with the money. It doesn't matter what you do. You are a thief if you scam people overseas out of their money. And I'm not scared of anyone. I'll tell you the truth any day of the week. You're a thief if you steal anybody's money. And God is not pleased with you. God is not pleased with the thief, the murderer, the fornicator, the adulterer. God is not pleased. And he will send the fornicator to hell. He will send the thief to hell. He will send the murderer to hell. And many of you here think you're not a murderer. The Bible says if you have hated anyone, you have murdered them in your heart. Many of you here think you are not an adulterer. The Bible says if a man looks with lust, he has committed adultery with the woman in his heart. That's the bad news, that we are all sinners and we're all enslaved to sin. That's the bad news, that all of us are wicked. That's the bad news, that all of us are on our way to hell. But the good news is this. Jesus Christ can save you today. Jesus Christ can save you today. The Lord Jesus Christ can save you today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Repent of your sins and live. Repent and live. Repent and live before it is too late. Don't let too late be your cry. Don't let too late be your cry. But ask yourself the question, is it well with your soul? Ask yourself the question, are you at peace with God? Ask yourself the question, are you saved? Ask yourself the question, is God your enemy or is God your friend? You need to ask yourself. Because if the answer to any of those questions is no, you must, you must be concerned. You must be worried. You must be afraid. You must be afraid because guess what? The reason why you are alive right now is because God has allowed you to be alive. The reason why you're breathing is because God has given you breath. And you walk around every day sinning. You walk around every day hating God. You walk around every day of rebelling against God. You walk around every day living a life of lawlessness. And God holds your life in the palm of his hand. And he will take your life when he wishes. He will kill you when he wishes. Many of you don't even think that God kills. Many of you don't even think that God kills people. I'll read something for you. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. I am he, and there is no God besides me. It is I who put to death and give life. 
I have wounded and it is I who heal. And there is no one who can deliver from my hand. When God is ready to kill you, no one can save you. He is the one who gave you life and he is the one who will take it. God is the one who kills. And many of you are walking around today and you hate God. You hate God. Because every day, as a man, you sleep with a woman who's not your wife. Every day, as a man, you burn weed and you smoke weed. Every day, as a man, you go to the strip club and you look at women without self-respect. You, as a man and as a woman, you call people overseas and you scam them out of their money. You are a thief. You hate God. You hate God. If you think you love God and live in sin, you're self-deceived. And guess what? Tomorrow is promised to none of you. You could die right now. God can cut your life off right now if he wishes. God can cut my life off right now if he wishes. I say again, ask yourself this question. Are you at peace with God? Is God your friend or is God your enemy? Because if God is your enemy, you must be concerned. The Bible says in Nahum chapter 1 verse 2, A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. God is reserving wrath. He's reserving wrath for his enemies. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 4, If you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. If you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. And God reserves wrath for his enemies. Are you God's enemy? Are you God's enemy? I say this again because a lot of you weren't here earlier. I'll say this again. The Bible does not teach that you were born a child of God. I'll say it again because this is a very, very common lie that you believe. Many of you believe that you are children of God. Many of you believe that you are children of God. If I were to ask any of you, most of you will say, yes, you are a child of God. But the Bible says, John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as have received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. You have to be given that right. You are not born with that right. You have to be given that right. God makes you his child. God makes you his son. No one here was born a child of God. You are either a child of God or you are a child of the devil. The Bible says in John chapter 8, John chapter 8 verse 44, I'll read this again. You are of your father the devil and you want to do the desires of your father. Everyone who lives in sin, everyone who's not a Christian, everyone who's not a child of God, you are a child of the devil. And when you die, God will send you to hell. No one can save you except God alone. I say again, repent and live. Repent and live. Repent of all your sins and turn to God and live before you die. Your death appointment could be today. Your death appointment could be today. The Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die. 
And then comes the judgment. This means that you and I have a death appointment. All of us are going to die one day. And do you know who kills you when you die? Do you know who takes your life when you die? That's God. God takes your life. Many of you think that God gives life and the devil takes it. Many of you think that God is the one who gives life and the devil takes life. Oh, that is so wrong. That is so unbiblical. That is such a lie. If anyone believes that foolishness, you should be ashamed of yourself. God is the one who takes life. And God is the one who gives life. Many of you have been told, many of you have been told this lie. The only thing that the devil can't do is give life. Does that mean it can take life? Does that mean it can take life? I've heard this lie growing up. I've heard this lie growing up. The only thing that the devil can't do is take life. That means he can do everything else except take life. I've also heard, well rather, that's not what I heard, that's a lie. What I heard was, that was a mistake, what I heard was, the only thing that the devil can't do is give life. That's a lie from the kingdom of darkness. The devil can't give life and the devil can't take life. Only God gives life. And only God takes life, and no one here is too young to die. All of us are going to die one day. I say this again. Repent of your sins and believe in Christ. Repent of your sins and trust in Christ before you die. Repent and live before you die. Because your death is coming. Your death is coming. And every day you wake up, you get closer and closer to your last day. Every breath you take, you get closer and closer to your last breath. Every day you live, you get closer to death. Death is stalking you, and death is getting closer and closer to you every day. All of us are going to die. I say to you again, repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Repent and live. Repent and live. Repent and live before it is too late. Now I'll say this again before I go. It's getting late. I have to go home. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin that we may become the righteousness of God in Him. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, I am found in Christ not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but a righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith in Jesus Christ my Lord. When you repent of your sins, when you trust in Christ, because God has caused you to be born again, God gives you His righteousness. When God looks at you through the blood of Christ, He does not see your sin. When God looks at you through the blood of Christ, He sees perfection, He sees righteousness, and He sees holiness. That is why when you are a Christian, when you are a child of God, and you have the love of God, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, Love keeps no record of wrongs. God does not see your 